Hello and welcome to a trial of the full guide for 1.3.0.6, the lifeblood update. Uh, currently still in public beta, but it should be uh, pushed to the main branch relatively soon. Now, first let's go over a nail build. So that'll be Fragile Strength, Nail Master's Glory, obviously a very good choice. Mark of Pride or Long Nail, Quick Slash, and then for the last notch, you can really equip uh, anything you want. You could actually swap this out for Long Nail and put on something else like Lifeblood Heart, but I'll just put on Dream Wielder even though that's not nail related. <coughs> it doesn't really matter what you put in the last notch slot and here we go now even though this is a nail build uh, you still uh, should use spells first of all charge up a great slash here excuse me and then you just you know smack away with your nail at everything charge up great slash when you can uh, you could deal with primal aspids and mantis petras and the like using a single great slash or you could uh, not and just use two regular nail hits walked quite a bit too far there here you just want to avoid these sturdy fools avoid their saws as well as you can see, using spells is still quite an effective strategy. Pardon the uh, excessive damage I'm taking here. Uh, taking some effort to commentate while playing. For this way, you basically just need to wall jump uh, over here, and the bell flies should kill all the heavy fools and kill themselves as well. Mistimed that, uh, that, but you should be able to just dispatch these death loodles with a single nail art. Uh, not counting Cyclone Slash, of course. And then just procedurally deal with these guys as they come near you. Kill this central one, and then deal with the other two. Oop. Great slashed a little bit too late there. Out of range. Alright. And here again, you want to use Great Slash for the overwhelming majority of the enemies. You can pogo on this winged fool. And here, they have removed uh, that little space on the top platform where you don't get hit. Again, use Great Slash. You can use it against a Winged Fool and then uh, add in one more nail hit. Here, to be safer against the Heavy Fool, you can Descending Dark after the uh, Primal Aspid dies. can deal with Petras either with two nail hits or with a single nail art. But that's alright. Walls will close in shortly. Rather soul twisters. Never mind. And now you just need to deal with the three mistakes just with your regular nail. And then charge up a great slash, start moving. And try to do a few double hits with your shade soul. And that will be good. Here with the bolt twisters, you just want to... Oop, that was a bit rough. Bolt twisters, you want to do a single great slash and then a nail hit. Couldn't quite pogo there. 
couldn't quite pogo there either. This is quite sad. Quite unfortunate. Charge up another Great Slash to deal with this. Alright. Alright. Thank you. Very much. Lovely. Lovely. Really enjoy that. And just heal up once again. Heal up again. Two nail hits with fragile strength. Might as well use Great Slash as well. There you go. And this should be the Brooding Molek. Start off with a Great Slash. Use a uh, Shade Cloak to your advantage. <coughs> and then heal up to full. Pretty nice. And since Dream Wielder is equipped, you can get in quite a few uh, Dream Nail hits here and get to full soul. That's quite unfortunate indeed. And then charge up a Great Slash once again. Here we go. And that should be good. Deal with that guy. Start charging up, up a Great Slash. Basically for any enemies other than the Winged Fools, you can deal with them with Great Slashes. For these Battle Obbles, you can pogo on them from above, or hit them from the side, or hit them from below. Basically, oop, just anything except the diagonals and then pogo on those winged fools you can great slash these guys or just hit them with your nail down into the spikes and that'll be absolutely fine and now with great slash you can deal with some of these death loodles if they spawn or approach you very close by and that'll lower your chance of getting hit tremendously then just charge up a great slash again basically just a good idea to keep great slash charged up at all times all right dive invincibility didn't kick in there there you go <coughs> and now if you have a fairly slow enemy like a shielded fool you can keep it alive and dream nail it Oopsie daisy. To regain soul if you need that sort of thing, alright? Thank you for staying out of range of the Great Slash. That's very nice. And so you can do that. You can regain your soul from shielded fools, but that's not strictly necessary. Again, use Great Slash on the squits. You can use Great Slash against these Armored Boulders, but that is not quite as effective. And these should be the last few enemies prior to God Tamer. There you go, and then charge up another Great Slash. Why not? <laughs> Why not? Wow, this is very good. Quite a challenge. And once you let that off, do a dive to stay invincible. And you can basically just damage spam the beast and uh, succeed at the god tamer. Doesn't really take much dodging to win. And that is the nail build. Basically, you could swap out Marker Pride for Long Nail if you feel like it. But uh, Nail Master's Glory and Fragile Strength are quite the uh, boon when it comes to the trial in this case. Now I guess we can uh, go over a different strategy, a spell build. So you'll just want you know, these spell charms. Now, you could use Soul Eater instead. And that is absolutely fine. 
but the problem with that is, of course, you're only left with one notch. You could overcharm uh, for something, for Nail Master's Glory, for example, but I prefer using that. Then, I don't know, use Mark of Pride, maybe Fluke Nest. Uh, Fluke Nest is three notches now. I'm playing on an old save, so it's two notches, but that's alright. Shade Soul is pretty, uh, pretty much comparable to uh, Fluke Nest when it comes to performing in the Trial of the Fool. Uh, because it's sort of like it can pierce through enemies, unlike Fluke Nest, which only hits one enemy, or rather doesn't pierce it could hit multiple enemies uh, but it has lower damage so you'll want to build up a great slash hit the heavy fool and then do a shade soul to kill it all right now you can shade soul a primal aspid to deal with it and basically here you still can use nail arts semi-effectively. Now keep in mind that they will take much longer to charge if you don't have Nail Master's Glory equipped, and so they will be a bit less effective when it comes to... Okay, well that's nice. When it comes to uh, actually executing them. Thank you for that. Again, you want to watch out for those saws. Double hit is very good. And you can use the nail to kill those battle wobbles and then use Shade Soul. Shade Soul is basically standing in for Great Slash in the vast majority of these waves because it deals similar damage to Great Slash and thus it does kill things like Mantis Petras and Armored Squids and things like that. So it functions in much the same way although it actually does have a much higher range and thus it is in some cases better here you again want to use great slash even though this is a much more spell oriented build could have uh, used a shade soul to deal with those of course it doesn't one shot them but it will lower them to one nail hit uh, from death here again great slash is perfectly acceptable but shade soul is also very very good you can dispatch of the winged fool with simple nail swings and then again the scarpeed section you can just drop down charge up a great slash for this squid could use shade soul double jumped a bit too late there, unfortunately. Can't quite heal. There you go. Could have charged up a Great Slash if you had uh, probably done so earlier. But here, you can use spells to kill the Petras fairly effectively. Alright, missed that one, but that's alright. There you go. Now you don't actually want to pogo on the heavy fool that frequently, but I'm just a bit lazy and don't really care when I get hit by his uh, upwards jump. <coughs> but I don't know, if you want to be safer, you could attack heavy fools from the side. Here I failed to get a double hit off upon the uh, spawn of the uh, soul warrior but that's all right here again you can use great slash of course it's kind of finicky when it comes to teleporting enemies and since you don't have fragile strength it takes more than a great slash and one nail hit to kill but that's all right After getting a few Shade Souls off on the Soul Warrior, you can just use Straight Up Nail to deal with it. Here, I guess you could use a Great Slash and one Nail Swing. You can also use Descending Dark 
for high damage. Again, you want to charge up a Great Slash even though it's a spell build because it's just free damage. And then Descending Dark will do quite a bit towards killing the Brooding Moloch, especially with Shaman Stone. Again, you can Dream Nail these guys to fill up on soul. Hopefully I won't take damage to them this time. Quite unfortunate. And uh, now with Shaman Stone Shade Soul, you can effectively dispatch most of the enemies. You could charge up a uh, Great Slash to deal with one of them, but that would take a bit of time. Mantis Petra is a bit too healthy to deal with in one Shade Soul, but everything else is pretty much the same. Again, you want to make good use of Shade Cloak. Double hits are always welcome, although not completely reliable. For these squits, again, you could uh, use Shade Soul on them, or you can just pogo them straight into the spikes, which is good if you have uh, good timing. Not good if you don't. Might as well fire some Shade Souls. You want to be wary of all these Death Loodles spawning, but uh, in general, they should not hit you that often. Could Descending Dark to get some invincibility and be safer during the fight. Deal with the Heavy Fool first. That's quite effective. Again, deal with the Petra first as well, since it is more dangerous than the Shielded Fool. Let's see here. You want to avoid the Soul Twister and its attacks, but it shouldn't be that bad. Meant to Shade Soul there. That was alright. Expected him to roll under me, unfortunately. That was not the case, and so the plan greatly failed. Now here, I guess, would be a good demonstration of Dream Nailing, a Shielded Fool. You can do this with other enemies, of course, but <coughs> the Shielded Fool is, by and large, the easiest enemy to do this with. It is a bit finicky, uh, as the Shielded Fool's attack range is just a bit longer or farther out than your Dream Nail. Now for God Tamer, you could just charge up a Great Slash again and do that at the very beginning for some free damage, but here, if you want to be safe, you could just Descending Dark for the majority of the fight, like so. The Beast can be uh, damaged by spells while rolled up, so Descending Dark is quite, quite good. You can also use Shade Soul, but that does less damage than the dive attack, so I just prefer to use that. You can use Abyss Shriek, actually, if you get close enough, but that is a bit more risky than just diving with, you know, dive's invincibility period. It is quite a bit easier to deal with the trial with that spell in particular. And now that we've gone over sort of like all spells and all nail builds, of course they are somewhat mixed, I guess we could go over a meme build. <coughs> uh, full summon. It's really not a very good idea to do this, by the way. But here you go. This should be uh, quite interesting. I have not used this uh, to fight the Trial of the Fool yet. So I guess now is the time. Um, of course, you could equip Defender's Crest to uh, make the, I don't know, the spawned night flies, whatever you would like to call them, a bit more lethal. Uh, walked right into the... Alright, Sprint Master is a bit, bit unfortunate, to be honest. It's messing up my uh, walking 
behavior due to the fact that I'm moving much faster than I normally would. I want to pogo on these battle wobbles and let the minions deal with them, I guess. <coughs> this is performing quite a bit better than I would have expected. Of course, it is not as good of an, I an idea as, you know, spell or nail, but it works. Of course, you might need to uh, actually practice quite a bit, and having all these minions on the screen sort of makes the game a bit more confusing with all this visual clutter. Alright, just do this, I guess. It is wasting soul on the uh, glowing room hatchlings, but that's alright. And there you go. There is that wave. Can still do that sort of thing. Oh, barely missed that great slash charge up. Probably could use Nail Master's Glory, that is quite excuse me, quite an, a uh, recommended charm, especially for this, uh, you know, death loodles, quite, quite good to deal with using Great Slash, just banking on the fact that they would not jump at me, of course they did, unfortunately, but that's alright, here again, Great Slash, I guess, for these enemies, didn't quite charge one up in time, but that's fine, could just deal with those guys. Oops, banking on a fireball there. Didn't have enough soul. Hopefully I can heal here. Should be enough, there you go. Charge up another Great Slash. Now, if you wanted, you could perhaps <coughs> overcharm with King Soul. And that would be very good indeed to uh, deal with this. Now, of course, it is sort of unrealistic to expect, um, what is this, uh, full level Grimchild at this point in the game, but if you do have it, you can use it here to great effect, as you can see. You can pogo on that Petra if you get to it prior to it spawning. Charge up another Great Slash, I guess. I don't really know the optimum strategy for this build here. Just trying it out. Why not? Very uh, good guide to the Trial of the Fool, as you can see. You can pretty much use any build you really want, uh, and as long as you like attack with the nail, you will be fine. Now, um, I did try to beat the Trial of the Fool with uh, Weaver Song only dealing damage, uh, no nail hits whatsoever, and that was extremely difficult, so there is that caveat that you do need to actually provide some supplementary damage with your nail if you'll want to use a very uh, unwise build. That should be it. Charge this up. Get some spell hits in there. Now, the one problem with this build is that it uh, drains your soul quite a bit, because you'll be spawning hatchlings nigh on constantly, and so it is a bit difficult to get enough soul to heal, but that should be fine. If you uh, have this build on, it is quite strong indeed, as you can see, especially with Grimchild and uh, Pure Nail combining with that Dream Shield, albeit uh, Dream Shield doesn't really activate quite as frequently as <coughs> I would like, being that it, it is pretty much a random... Okay, I'm gonna miss that. That should be enough for the no floor wave. Hoping I could have gotten the dream nail off there. I probably could have, but started a bit too late. And again, charge up Great Slash, because why not deal with one enemy? Alright. You can just bank on uh, Grimchild for the rest. The only real worry here is uh, the Primal Aspid Wave. Alright, that didn't quite get pogoed down into the spikes. That's quite unfortunate. Whew. I 
Again, Pogo is your friend. Here, Pogo is your friend as well. You just want to time it relatively quickly and, you know, in time with the spawn of the armored squits. And here again, you can use Great Slash to fend off any death loodles that come near, but it should be relatively safe on this platform. Again, I get hit right as I say that, but shouldn't take too much damage, and the damage you do take should be relatively easy to heal back up. Descending Dark is great. That Petra should be uh, dealt with as quickly as possible, because it is probably the most dangerous enemy uh, out of the bunch. Volt Twister, you basically just keep moving, and, and that's it. Ah, I didn't quite heal up quickly enough to uh, dodge those boulders. There you go. Pogo again is very good. This should be the final fool. Again, you can charge up Great Slash. <coughs> and you could actually leave the shielded fool alive and dream nail it. Now that will be much harder with, uh, you know, a bunch of minions attacking it, but should be alright in either case. Again, Descending Dark is absolutely fantastic. I'm uh, not really attempting to dodge God Tamer anymore, but uh, you could if you wanted. You can just jump up over the rolling ball and whatnot, but Descending Dark really makes it quite a bit easier to deal with the God Tamer. And again, you do want to focus on the beast rather than the Tamer herself, because the Tamer gives up, as you can see, after the beast dies. And, uh, you know, Pogo is your friend and whatnot. So, I guess, uh, <coughs> what else? Final build? Uh, let's see here. Why not just use, uh, Sharp Shadow? Sure. Why not? That sounds good. Maybe, uh, hmm. As you can see, Fluke Ness is two notches. It should be three, but that's all right. Steady body, why not? You know, heavy blow, that's a pretty good idea. I'm gonna use Nail Master's Glory so I can actually do some stuff. And, uh, hmm. <coughs> Seems like a pretty, pretty good build here. Pretty good build we're making. Uh, yeah, that's quite the good idea here. This is probably going to be the last build I showcase here since it is the best one, of course. Um, it is a mixture, uh, as you can see, it's a mixture of um, nail here, and uh, I don't know, dash, that's not really, and exploration, and also the radiance. So it is quite effective at dealing with this uh, trial, trust me. There you go. I actually dealt with that much better than any of the previous times, apparently. That is kind of strange. Here, since, you know, the nail is dealing less damage than would be pref preferable, sorry, uh, you do want to pogo quite a bit more to uh, dodge enemy attacks. With Nail Master's Glory, you want to do Great Slash quite a bit. Try to great slash that winged fool. Try to get double hits with Shade Soul, but if not, that's alright. Perfectly acceptable. And then build up a great slash here. That's fine and dandy. Obviously, uh, having Nail Master's Glory is not absolutely required. You could uh, equip some other things, maybe a Shape of Oom um, if you want. Obviously, you'd have to sacrifice. Uh, at least one other charm if you don't want to over charm for that. But you could over charm if you truly wanted the shape of Un so badly. And, uh, you know, that would help quite a bit. 
with the trial. Alright, didn't quite get that off there. Unfortunately. Double kill, at least, makes up for it. You can just kill all those guys. Double kill again, that's quite nice. So yeah, you can basically just only equip Nail Master's Glory and that'll be a completely valid strategy. Alright, Pogo. Get enough time for one heal in here. Charge up a Grey Slash again. Get ready to deal with this guy. Deal with that guy. Use the nail to build up some soul. Charge up a Great Slash yet again. Again, Descending Dark. There you go. Didn't quite get that. The hitbox of Shade Soul here is quite a bit... Thank you, Shade Cloak, for actually working. Uh, the hitbox of Shade Soul is quite a bit smaller. Uh, not having... Okay. Probably should just use Abyss Shriek, if I'm being honest. That would be easier. There you go. Obviously, uh, spending less and less effort on dodging as uh, this video progresses, but that's completely fine. Not required in the least. Uh, heal up before the mistakes come in. You can leave one mistake alive here and dream nail it if you do so desire. That was not within range. Let's try this. There you go, and uh, get some soul that way for healing. Don't even need to charge up a Great Slash if you want. This first Soul Warrior spawns uh, Follies to help it. So you can just deal with those with your nail. Probably should have healed uh, here. Dash is a bit too long with Sharp Shadow. Then you just want to dodge these fireballs until you get close enough to Great Slash. Obviously that did not work. But there you go. Killed that Bolt Twister before it got a chance to attack. That was unfortunate. Let's see if I can get a heal off. Alright, trying to pogo, thank you. Again, getting double hits with uh, Shade Soul. Alright, I ran out of soul for a fireball there, unfortunately. Uh, getting double hits with the Shade Soul is preferable against the Soul Warrior. That was pretty nice. Maybe get two healed off here. Descending Dark did not... That was quite strange. Descending Dark did not deal with that guy, unfortunately. That was probably the worst performance ever against those Molex. Can just pogo this Winged Fool and then deal with these two using a Descending Dark. With Quick Slash, this will be quite nice. Oops, didn't quite use up the invincibility period well enough. <coughs> wow, okay. And here again, you can do this. Maybe catch that back end. No? Alright. As you can see, you can Dream Nail quite a bit here. Heal up one more time and then charge up Great Slash. And that'll be good. Wow. Here you go. Charge up Great Slash again. There you go. I don't know, deal with these guys using Great Slash. Not the best idea. Fired the wrong way. Absolutely fine. Pogo again is quite nice. Don't need Great Slash. Uh, just
just pogo these guys into the ground. All right. Took a bit of damage because I mistimed it, but that's fine. Fine. As you can see, it's not really that dangerous. Oh, fuck. Uh, it's not really that dangerous to uh, not charge up Great Slash for those squits. Or even to, like, not take much damage on these platforms. I took two or three damage there, but as you can see, you have plenty of soul. Okay, four damage? Five? How much damage will I take? Uh, you have plenty of soul left here to heal back up. And so that's absolutely fine. Parry there was pretty unexpected, but welcome. Nice. Trying to get nail hits off. Pogos on shielded fool are very, very nice. Trying to jump, but that did not work properly. Great. Wow, thank you for that. And that's fine. For the Volt Twister, all you really want to do is keep moving. Alright, that's very sad. Keep taking damage to the boulders upon the spawn. Learning. Ascending. Alright. Might as well just take some damage from that shielded fool. Not shielded fool, that sturdy fool. Why not? Really? <coughs> as far as soul uh, is concerned, it's not really necessary. There you go. Starting off with a whopping zero soul for the god tamer, and that's absolutely fine. You can get enough soul during the fight to start chaining descending dark and whatnot. There you go. Get that off. And as you can see, it's quite... Alright, didn't have enough soul there. But that's fine. Don't even need to dodge the spit, really. And now at the end, I still have enough soul to heal all the way back up to full health. So as you can see, this is quite the good build for this trial. Very, very effective. Um... Probably my go-to, actually. My go-to build for the Trial of the Fool. You know, as well as Nightmare King Grim and all the other uh, combat challenges in the game. It is very, very good, especially Gathering Swarm and Wayward Compass. Uh, that duo of charms really provides an outlet for extreme damage uh, to any enemies that you have in Hollow Knight. That has been a guide to the Trial of the Fool for the Lifeblood update with, you know, nerfed Fluke Nest and whatnot. Uh, I've been Verulian, and I'll see you next time.